Hi, this is Alexis Van Herkman, and welcome to my DaVinci Resolve training title on behalf of Ripple Training. This first title is designed to be an overview of DaVinci Resolve using as its application DaVinci Resolve Lite. Now, this training title is equally applicable if you have the full-blown version of DaVinci Resolve, since the interfaces are exactly the same. The only difference between Resolve and Resolve Lite are a handful of limitations that I'll cover where relevant during the lessons. Let's go ahead and get started. As I said, I'm going to actually be going through this overview within DaVinci Resolve Lite. If you don't have a copy and you're interested in learning more about the software, you can go ahead and download it for free from the Blackmagic website. Let's get started. First off, I'm going to show you an overview of the entire UI. Now, having just launched, the first thing you'll notice is that DaVinci Resolve has been designed to be a multi-user application. And the very first thing you see is the user login page. The user login page references a series of databases that you create. DaVinci Resolve is a database-driven application. In fact, if I click on the Database Manager button, you can see that I actually have a number of different databases available. Right now I'm using the Light database. I'll click Select. Each database can have a number of different users assigned to that database, and each user has a number of subordinate projects available to that user. So that's the overall structure. You can have multiple databases, any one database of which contains multiple users, each user of which contains multiple projects. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open the Alexis user. That's me. Having opened that up by double-clicking it, I now see a project list down here on the config page. The project list contains a list of all the projects that are assigned to user Alexis. I'm going to go ahead and click on this pre-made class project I've put together. Click the Load button. Many panes in DaVinci Resolve have a series of buttons that let you manage the contents of that pane. In general, a lot of the time, you can also right-click on any item, and it will reveal a contextual menu that shows a number of additional commands that aren't always necessarily available via an on-screen button. It's a good tip when getting used to DaVinci Resolve in general. It's a good idea to right-click on anything just to see if there happens to be a contextual menu with more options that aren't immediately available. In fact, oftentimes there are options available in contextual menus that aren't even available from the menu bar up at top. As I mentioned, we're in the config screen. The config screen is, by and large, a setup screen a lot of things that are consolidated within the config screen that you'd otherwise see in a preferences window or a project setup pane or something like that. Basically, anything involved with settings, setup, or preferences uh, is going to be found within the config page. First overall view of the config page has a number of panes. There's a user list. And the user list is primarily to allow you to access users in other databases. So you're presented a list with all the available databases. And of the available databases, you can open up other users and add them to the current database if that's something you want to do. There is a configuration list. And the configuration list allows you to create different kind of easy open configs. I'll show you what I mean. I've created this 720p config. If you look over here in the project tab, the project tab contains all of the aspects of the current project. Its resolution, its proxy usage, timeline conform options, which have the, the time code of the timeline. Basically, anything that has anything to do with a particular timeline or session, as they're referred to in Resolve, uh, can be customized here. If I 
choose a different config, we can see that some of these options have changed. And in fact, if I go into the settings tab and the settings tab, so you know, is where all of the preferences are found for how different UI elements in Resolve function. If I change to a different config, you can see that those preferences are updating every time I choose another config. Now, when I choose another config, if I want it to stick, I have to click the load button. And then it asks me, do you want to replace the current project's config with this selected config? And I can choose yes or no. For now, I'm going to choose no. I'm going to go on to the autosave tab. The autosave tab is the autosave mechanism within uh, Resolve. There are two modes, aside from, of course, just turning it off. When you simply set autosave to on, every 10 minutes or whatever is selected from the pop-up, a simple command S is issued. So basically as if every 10 minutes you pressed command S and that's all that happens. If you choose to backup project, what happens is a separate version of the current project is saved and added to the auto backup list. This is a more time intensive process. You want to evaluate within the way you work whether or not you want to be interrupted by whatever duration you select and have the backup project process take place. Now this is going to interrupt anything you're in the middle of. So if you're in the middle of a color correction and 10 minutes elapse and a backup project has to be made, it will interrupt what you're doing. So just be aware that that's how it works. For now, I'm going to set autosave to off. But again, notice if I choose a different config, the autosave status is saved as part of my config. Lastly, we'll take a look at the source tab. And the source tab contains all of the settings for red R3D media decoding. The first thing you want to know is if you've got red media, the decode clips using the default setting is camera metadata. If you want to override the camera metadata associated with each R3D clip, you can choose project. And at that point, you have all of the standard red decoding settings available to you. You can also select the decode quality from this pop-up and you can change the decode quality at any time. So if you want to work at a lower quality just to get through the day and then you want to jump up to higher quality in order to render the final media, that's a workflow that you can do from the source page. So again, all of these tabs are primarily setting up your project. I'm just going to gloss over the LUTs tab, if you're using lookup tables in your workflow, those can be loaded here. Your settings for how Resolve generally works, your autosave settings, and your source settings if you're using R3D Media.